What does success look like? This is the age-old question that is all the more relevant today in our ever-evolving society. Technology is advancing, our economy is shifting, and each one of us is trying to define success personally as it pertains to reaching the goals that we've set out for ourselves. So whether you're trying to become successful financially, physically, personally, or spiritually, what I want to share with you today are various habits that have been developed over time and specifically that are utilized by millionaires in our society in order for them to become successful. So what I want to do is I just want to walk through these with you, not only share what those habits specifically are, but how you can integrate those habits into your life to reach your goals. And once again, I just want to encourage you that whatever your goals are, my perspective is I just want you to become successful in your specific life. Now, there are various ways that we can do this, but I really want to look at the facts behind the situation situation, the habits have been developed and have actually proven to be successful by producing results in the lives of those who we can actually measure and see tangibly. So once again, I thank you for watching this video. My name is Zach Beck and let's jump into this. One daily habit that most millionaires have in common is reading daily. Now, if you read daily for personal development, it's actually a very fulfilling approach to your daily life. Now, there was a recent study conducted by Thomas Crowley, and he found that 85% of self-made millionaires read on a daily basis, whether that's a self-help book, whether that's a spiritual book, or reading the newspaper, just something to that extent where they're actively engaging from an intellectual capacity. So my encouragement to you is to try and identify areas where you could be reading in your life. Now, personally, I like to read various books and various articles that come up relevant to the economy, relevant to politics, relevant to personal development. In addition, from a spiritual perspective, as a Christian, I do like to read the Bible on a daily basis, and this helps me personally to be centered and understand the proper trajectory moving forward. Now, I just want to be very clear. I'm not going to push any sort of agenda or try and proselytize or tell you a specific way that you should believe. I'm just going to share the approach that I take. But the facts are very relevant that if you find that 85% of people who are reading on a daily basis as self-made millionaires, it's a habit that's worth picking up, not only can you take a step back from the constant bombardment of what's happening on social media and what's happening just in the media writ large, when you're able to read, you're able to gain understanding of new information that you might have even considered. I remember when I first started reading financial books, this was back when I didn't really understand the proper approach to finances, saving, and investing, and I found myself being quite amazed by my lack of understanding of that particular area of the economy. And after I read, after I understood, and after I learned, then I was able to take tangible action, invest appropriately save my money and actually be on the track to become a millionaire. So all that to say, I just want to encourage you, whatever goal you're looking to achieve, like I said, if it's personal, if it's physical, if it's spiritual, if it's something different, think about reading relevant books. They're going to help develop your understanding of that particular area. And then you can actually apply those in your lives. So that's a great habit to develop first and foremost is reading actively engaging books. So go for it. Another important habit that most self-made millionaires integrate into their lives is living on a budget. Now this might seem a little bit surprising because most of us associate having a lot of wealth with being able to spend your money however you want and being able to be a little bit more liberal with how you allocate your resources. And it's actually quite the opposite. The percentages are pretty staggering. At least 70% of individuals who are self-made millionaires live on a budget that's really stipulated and strict. And this is something that I think if all of us can integrate into our life in one way, shape, or form, it really will help us because it just gives us a plan. It gives you an overview of where your money's coming in and where it's going out and what you have left over to save and invest or to place into other areas that you're passionate about. Perhaps you have an organization that you really care about that is attending to the needs to, of those who are in great need, whether that's like a mission organization, a nonprofit organization, a humanitarian organization, and perhaps you really want to contribute to that. So by having extra money, you can fulfill that mission in your life by contributing to that organization. Perhaps you want to go and do something extensive, not expensive, but you want to do something that's really fun with your family or with your spouse. So whatever it is for you, if you live on a budget, then you're able to plan accordingly and be able to still live your life to the fullest. So if you can look at those habits that millionaires adopt into their life, it really opens up your eyes to the fact that really the people who might not have as much money are the ones who are a bit looser with their money and just kind of let it go wherever it flows. And there's uh, an argument to be made about that and that you want to live your life in the present and not be so focused on the future that you're not able to live in the now. But it's also important 
important to have a plan so that way you can achieve longer term goals. So my encouragement to you is to develop a budget, whatever it is, you can get it with a pad and a pen and start writing it down. You could use an app like Mint or like Every Dollar or something else that you find online that's helpful. But whatever you do, this is a habit that millionaires adopt into their life cycles. So what I encourage you to do is do the same if you're wanting to become successful financially, personally, physically, or something else to that extent. Because when you're able to have your financial house in order, stress starts to dissipate. You're able to focus more on the things that you're most passionate about. And I believe that's why you'll find a lot of millionaires adopt a budget and stick to it because they're able to be freed up of their mind to focus on running their business, to focus on their families, to focus on their physical approaches and physical activities, whatever it is for them. That's the same thing I want for you. So take a look at that. So if you want to manage and maximize your money, you really want to focus on investing in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's investing in individual stocks, which requires a little bit more expertise, or you're managing it maybe investing in something like an index fund, which is the broader stock market, which is a little bit more seamline and passive and a little bit easier to do. Or if you're investing in your own personal business that you have a bit more control in, or maybe some combination of all three, if you're at least allowing your money to grow over time, it will help you enable you to manage and maximize your money to its fullest potential. And so reason why self-made millionaires are able to achieve that millionaire status at a certain stage in life is because their money has been able to compound due to compound interest has been able to grow over time and actually reach its potential in the same way that I want you to reach your potential so try and find a way to manage your money and maximize its potential by investing it into safe areas that you fully understand Another habit that self-made millionaires have in common is that they avoid debt. Now, this is a very important concept to understand from a fairly early age in life. Depending upon where you're at, you might have some form of debt right now, whether that's student loans, a car loan, a mortgage, or maybe you have high interest credit card debt or you financed a vehicle or something to that extent. Whatever your debt is for you, I just wanna let you know there's no guilt or shame associated for myself coming at you saying you shouldn't have it. All I would say is that if you can try and avoid it or at least try and get out of debt, it's a common trait that most self-made millionaires have what they do is and instead of trying to finance things and ask the question of how much does it cost on a monthly basis or what is the payment millionaires ask the question how much does it cost like what is the total cost and instead of trying to finance it they'll pay for it in cash so that way you're paying zero percent interest as opposed to financing something that might depreciate over time you'll find that self-made millionaires instead of financing a vehicle they will make an investment in like purchasing a home you know with cash so that way they can go rent it out and actually be able to develop and grow their income over time so think a bit differently as it pertains to debt and what you're thinking about with that is you're allowing yourself to delay your gratification by not buying some Something impulsively or buying something that's beyond your means and not trying to fall victim to lifestyle inflation where you're trying to spend more money as you have more money instead look at it this way look at debt as an ability for you to not be able to grow your wealth because what comes with debt is that you're going to pay more for whatever it is that you're purchasing over a longer period of time whereas if you were to take that same money and invest it in the stock market in a low uh, cost index fund that money would grow over time so you could finance a car for seven years but that car is going to depreciate and you're going to spend a significant amount of money especially at a high interest rate versus if you put that same amount into a vanguard index fund that's going to grow so it's really a matter of your approach in life what do you want do you want to have the here and now just get what you can even though you can't afford it or do you want to make a tangible specific strategic investment in your future so that way then you can go purchase that thing that you want but you can do it all in cash and you could actually have money left over that has been invested so trying to avoid debt looking at the habits of those who've been successful financially and debt doesn't just touch our finances, it touches every other aspect of our life. If you look about personally, and if you think about the stress levels that occur in spousal relationships, you know, if you have a wife, a husband, a spouse, something to that extent, you know, finances are one of the number one causes of divorce. And if you allow debt to come into your life, it can be such a stressful thing. My encouragement to you is to try and avoid it at all costs. Now, there might be times when you just simply can't avoid it, and I totally get it. Like if you need to go to college and you can't finance it, you know, that's that's something that sometimes happens but you know I would try and look at it a bit differently and think about it personally also for myself I look at it from a spiritual perspective I mentioned earlier when it came to reading you know I like to read the Bible on a daily basis and one of the verses it talks about is it says the borrower is slave to the lender 
And what that really means is that once you're taking money from someone to buy something else, then you're beholden to that person who's given you the money. And if that's a bank, an institution, a friend, someone else, I personally don't like being in that type of a position where I'm beholden to someone else. I don't think that's a good way to live because that takes away the freedom that exists in my life and the freedom that exists in your life. So try and find ways that you can avoid that at all costs because really it will set you up for your success financially, personally, and even spiritually. It's just such a freeing thing when you're out of debt. And there are various approaches you can take on this. If you need to take a course or you want like some form of community support, Dave Ramsey offers a program called Financial Peace University where they walk you through seven baby steps and actually help you get on a track so you can become debt free but also learn the principles of personal finance. In addition, if you want to use a different approach when it comes to finance, you know, getting rid of debt, there's the debt snowball method where basically you start by paying off your lowest debt first, your lowest amount of debt first, and you go to your next, and then you go to next and next, and you keep paying it all off, and then all of your debt is gone. There's also the debt avalanche method where you start with your highest interest debt first, and then you work your way down to your lowest interest debt at the end. Whatever it is for you, however you like to do it, just try and avoid debt at all costs. Another habit that self-made millionaires have in common is that they set daily goals. And by setting daily goals, this is really giving you, once again, like with a budget, it's giving you a framework and understanding and something that's tangible that you can achieve on a daily basis that allows you to move incrementally closer to your ultimate objective. Now, this is something that I have been doing since I was a child, setting up objectives, setting up goals where I know, okay, I need to go and like for physical goals, I want to run a marathon. So I knew that I need to start by running one mile a day. Then it was two miles and three miles, four miles, and on the weekends it grew up to 10 and eventually I was able to do 13 and you can see compounding over time you're able to achieve your goals by doing it small and simple starting somewhere and working towards it financially let's say that you do want to become successful financially start by investing ten dollars a week then go up to $25 a week. Eventually, maybe you're investing a couple hundred dollars every week. Maybe then you're automatically having money taken out of your paycheck going to your 401k. Then you're investing in your Roth IRA. Then you're investing in broader index funds. Whatever it is for you, start small by setting a daily objective. And this can also be personal. So let's say if you want to develop a relationally with your spouse, with a friend, whatever it might be. My wife and I do something on a daily basis. When I get home from work, we usually like to go for a walk by the beach right behind me. We actually live right near the coast and it's awesome. We love it. And what we do is we walk on the beach and we'll just talk and say, hey, what do we want to do tomorrow? We're always trying to make sure that we not only live in the present in our lives, but that we're focusing on the future just a little bit to set tangible goals and objectives that we can then hit and meet. And these goals might be, hey, we want to go on a date tomorrow, so let's plan it out. Let's go, you know, set ourselves up to be able to go to the restaurant we want. Or we might say, hey, we want to go on a vacation in the future, so let's, you know, tomorrow make sure we put aside certain money into this account. Or we might say something like, you know what, in this particular industry, like my wife who runs multiple businesses says, I need to reach this objective. So I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. For myself, I run a large department and a multi, you know, million dollar uh, budget and basically I have to say, okay, I need to do this, this, and this. Whatever it is for you, just set the objective and make it tangible. Don't say, you know, let's say you want to run a marathon, don't go and run 26.2 miles tomorrow. Start small. If you want, you know, whatever it is, just start small, set a daily goal and get after it on a daily basis. And that is the way that you're gonna find that over time, those things will compound and you'll be able to reach your longer term goals. I'll look at this when I ran for office. So I was one of the young, I was the youngest elected official in San Diego County history. And what we would do is every single day during the campaign, I would go and I would knock on doors, I would talk to voters, hear their concerns, I would wave signs, I would go and do everything I can, make phone calls, raise money, everything, every single day, just a little bit, every single day. And I remember at the end of the day, my wife would say, Zach, how'd it go today? And I'd say, well, you know, I didn't lose any votes today. Meaning that I was just doing a little bit, putting in the effort necessary on a daily basis, and I was just working slowly and methodically towards that goal. I ended up winning that election by a significant amount against people who were significantly more experienced, had all the political endorsements, who had much more uh, exposure politically and in the media, but I was able to beat them. And also I was significantly younger than them because I did the work necessary on a daily basis. So whatever it is for you, like I said, if it's a personal goal, a physical goal, a financial goal, or a spiritual goal, just start going after it slow and steady every single day. And I will encourage you, I believe that you'll be able to achieve it by setting those goals and going after it every single day. Another habit that self-made millionaires have in common is that they don't act rich. 
Now there is this misconception out there in society that most millionaires drive Lamborghinis, live in mansions, and you know do extensive things that really just separate them from the rest of society. When the actual truth is that a lot of people you would find who you wouldn't even know that they're millionaires, you know, they drive Toyota or a Honda, they live in a you know modest home, they do things that are pretty reasonable for the most part. That's because when you've developed a lifestyle, an approach where you're just achieving your daily goals that aren't necessarily surrounded by what type of uh, things you own or how many things you've been able to achieve or bring into your life, you just really want to have the freedom and flexibility and that's what money does. Money just basically brings you more freedom and flexibility. You don't need to show it off because why would you want to show it off? You're doing this so that way you can live your life to the fullest so that way you can achieve the goals that you've set out in your life, those personal goals, those physical goals, spiritual goals, financial goals, whatever they are. So what I would encourage you to do is wherever you're at personally right now, you know, there might be certain things you really want, you know, like if you really want a nice watch, you like nice clothing, you, you know, I'm not saying, you know, you have to be a pauper or anything to that extent, but being wealthy and having a lot of money isn't about being able to show it off. It's really about being able to have the time that money provides you with in order to live your life to the fullest. And whether you're living life to the fullest is being able to go and travel, being able to go and do you know exotic things out in society that are actually different than you normally would have the opportunity to do if you were working a nine to five job. Perhaps you really care about some sort of mission or some sort of purpose-driven approach in your life. Like you wanna go on a missions trip or you wanna contribute to some organization or you wanna you know, donate to someone who's actually in greater need, whatever it is for you, my encouragement is that don't fall victim to the approach that just because you have money, you have to you know, have very expensive things that showcase your wealth to others. Because at the end of the day, if we're constantly thinking about what other people think of us, and if we're focusing only on how other people view us, that to me is not only a bit shallow, it really doesn't bring you the fulfillment that you'd want. Uh, I can speak to this personally. I used to deal with so much anxiety when I was younger, concerned about what other people thought of me, how I looked, how I dressed, what I wore, all this kind of stuff. And I realized after time, people really care about who you are in here, in, in your heart, in your soul. And in Christianity, there's a saying, it's called being salt and light in the world. And by being salt and light means something that separates yourself, that actually makes you stand out a little bit. It's like, oh, I noticed that. And by being a Christian, personally, if you're salt, you're actually noticing the world by being nice, <laughs> by being encouraging. And I really apologize because unfortunately in society right now, Christianity has such an, a negative correlation with what's happening. And um, I'm really uh, discouraged by that, but there's also great things happening from Christians and non-Christians. So my encouragement is it, you know, when you're trying to live your life to the fullest, you, know, you don't have to act it by having great possessions or by doing great things that are you know, viewed as successful financially. You just really want to showcase who you are personally inside of your heart, and that will just flow out into everything you do by the way that you contribute to other things, why you, you know, give your time to organizations you care about, by the way that you treat other people in your discourse, how you communicate online, on social media, things like that. In addition, the other saying of that is by being light in the world is by being a bright spot in other people's days. Now, all of us in the world are dealing with all sorts of stress dealing with financial stress, relational stress, personal stress, perhaps physical stress, like health issues. And if you have the ability to, to lift someone up by you know, saying a nice word, by opening a door, uh, by just giving a smile, whatever it is, I, I find that to be so um, encouraging to others. And it will help you also develop your relationships uh, in the marketplace, in, in other organizations, and with, with your close loved ones. So, don't get focused on trying to act rich if you are achieving financial success in your life. Just focus internally on what's going on personally. And I know I'm coming at this from a Christian perspective, but I also want to encourage you, whatever your faith is, wherever you land on that, agnostic all the way to some, atheist, whatever it is, my encouragement is to you is to really try and find a way to bring a positive energy into this world. For me, it's being salt and light. For you, it might be something different. But if you're able to do that, my goodness, it really can make an impact. And think about that. At the end of the day, you want to really make a tangible impact in the lives of others because that will bring you fulfillment and joy. So that's my encouragement to you. Don't try and act rich if you're successful financially because guess what? Self-made millionaires don't either. <laughs> Another habit that self-made millionaires have in common is that they avoid get-rich-quick schemes. Now, I would say that most millionaires understand that patience is an essential virtue in their lives. And that's something that I believe all of us should work to obtain, is that we understand that there's no quick approach to be able to be successful, specifically from a financial perspective, let alone from a personal perspective or physical perspective. It requires day-to-day -day work, a significant amount of dedication and perseverance and patience to be able to achieve the goals that you've set out in your lives. So if you try and avoid things 
things like pyramid schemes or trying to do things where once again you might be trying to cut a corner or cut something that's really not appropriate whatever you're trying to do that is trying to reach your goal sooner than you're supposed to or sooner than really is feasible it's not something that is necessarily going to last over time so my encouragement to you is to look at the habits of people who've actually done it who've actually become successful financially i would say that if you are willing to do the necessary work if you're willing to invest if you're willing to save you're willing to live on a budget you're willing to work on bringing additional revenue into your your budget on a daily on a weekly basis so that way you can actually have multiple streams of income whatever it is for you if you're willing to do the day-to-day -day work i believe you will obtain the goals that you're looking to achieve specifically financially that requires a lot of perseverance requires a lot of dedication if you're looking physically to achieve a goal you, know, you can't just go to the gym once and then be perfectly fit with a six-pack or something like that it requires day-to-day -day work it requires proper nutrition it requires time if you want a thriving marriage you can't just be nice to your spouse once you have to you know you date your your significant other you get to know them you begin to love them and appreciate them and, and actually do things for them and grow closer to them by spending time with them by listening to them by having fun together it's not just a once and done sort of a thing so i think that's something that unfortunately in our society there is this tendency for us to want things here and now you know we want things immediately and i understand that from a capitalistic perspective that you want to maybe you know if you want to purchase something you want to get it now i understand that but if we're talking about bigger objectives we're talking about you know becoming a millionaire talking about you know becoming physically well you're talking about having a thriving marriage talking about living a life where you're feeling fulfilled and have meaning and purpose it's going to require time Now that we've discussed the different habits that millionaires integrate into their lives to become successful financially, what I wanna do is you might be asking yourself right now, well, Zach, how do I achieve this? How do I integrate these habits into my life? And I have a couple of steps I'd like to share with you right now, specifically things I've done personally in my life in order to integrate these habits to become successful holistically. Now, a couple of things I'd wanna look at, and the first is this, establish a vision for your life. It's so critical to understand the why behind anything that you do. Why do you wanna become successful financially? Why do you wanna become successful physically? Why do you wanna become successful spiritually? Why do you wanna become successful holistically? Whatever it is for you, if you take time to understand why, that gives you the rationale for why you're going to put in the hard work on a daily basis. For myself personally, understanding that I wanna have a thriving marriage, understanding that I wanna have a holistic life of meaning and purpose, understanding that I wanna have the resources necessary to go and do positive things in the world, those are the things that motivate me internally. Now, even deeper than that, spiritually, I am motivated from, what, from a Christian perspective that I believe the Lord has called me to make a positive impact in the lives of others. So that provides me with a lot of motivation to do sacrificial things, to make sure I'm doing what I can to make a positive impact in the lives of others, even if it requires a little bit of hard work on my end, understanding and knowing that in order to be salt and light, it's not the easiest thing to do. So establish a vision for your life, whatever that is, whatever perspective you're coming from, and that will help to hone in your understanding of where you're going and why you're going there. Another way that you can work towards integrating these habits into your life is to try and make your passion a profession. Now, when you're able to work on a daily basis on something that you're really passionate about, it almost never feels like work. And I would say that's really encouraging thing to strive for. It's not necessarily something that all of us can achieve, but if we make that a goal, then it really helps us to be able to have drive and motivation behind it. For example, I'm really passionate about public service. And by being in government, it allows me to serve the public in a very tangible way. There might be people who think that is not something they'd want to do. That's totally fine. But every day when I go to work, I really love it. I also love helping people on a deeper level. That's why I created this YouTube channel. It's because I want to help people and I really enjoy it. So it's, it's something I'm very passionate about. Previously, I've served in capacities where I ran nonprofit organizations, where I've served in churches, where I've been able to run businesses that I was passionate about. So if you're able to become passionate about your profession, don't try and force it. But if you can integrate the two naturally, it really makes every day much more meaningful and purposeful and allows you to achieve your goals personally and professionally. So I would work on trying to do that in some way, shape, or form in your life because that's what most self-made millionaires are doing. They're trying to integrate their passion into their profession and then it's much easier to do the hard work necessary to become successful. 
Another way that you can integrate these habits into your life is to focus on solutions rather than problems. Now, we live in a relatively negative society where we focus on negativity in media, we focus on negativity in social media, we focus on negative negativity personally as well. We're always you know, questioning or thinking about, oh, how I could look better, how I could be better, how I could achieve something more significantly, whatever it is. But if we can focus on the solutions instead of just focusing on the problems, it allows us to activate our potential because we're no longer just drowning in sorrow and thinking about how bad things are or thinking about what the issue is at hand. Instead, we can pivot and shift our focus to understanding what can we do to get out of this trouble. If you're running a business and you're trying to navigate the ever-changing tides in our economy, maybe you're not just focused on, oh my goodness, this is so hard. You're focused on how can we maximize this? How can we capitalize on this issue right now? Personally, you might be having a physical issue right now where you're not able to achieve your physical goals. So that might lead you to despair or depression. You might say, ah, I'm just gonna give up. Instead, take that and allow that motivation to drive you to actually work harder to achieve your goals, to do what you need. In addition, when it comes financially, if perhaps you've seen the stock market go low and you're freaked out and you're saying, oh, I don't wanna invest right now because I don't know if I'm ever gonna get that money back, maybe this is an opportunity for you to actually invest when it's low. You know, the saying goes, you know, buy low, sell high right? You don't want to buy high and sell low. So think about this. If you can focus on solutions rather than focusing on problems, you just need to understand the problem. That's all that really is necessary. But if you can focus on the solutions in life, it just makes life more enjoyable, more um, accessible, and really it'll help you actually achieve your goals because no longer are you downtrodden and only focus on the negativity in life, you're focused on the positivity in life, and that will lead to a more successful life. Another way to integrate these habits into your life is to develop your leadership skills. Now we experience right now, in my opinion, a leadership vacuum in our society. Most people are always willing to pass the buck to someone else and say, oh, you know what? It's someone else's fault or I'm not responsible or you know what? Gosh, you know, society as a whole, it's their problem, whatever it is. And what I would say is we're lacking leadership. Leadership requires taking responsibility and saying, I'm going to take the initiative to achieve the objective in my life. Someone else isn't going to do it. I needed to be responsible to do that. Now, I understand from a spiritual perspective, there's a little bit of depth associated with that. Now, when it comes to me as a Christian, what I believe is that leadership isn't just saying, I'm taking the reins of my life and no one else has any involvement. I believe spiritually that God really plays a role in my life and ultimately he's in charge, but I need to steward what I need to do in my life in order to obtain the objectives that have set, been set out before me. So when it comes to developing leadership skills, leadership requires humility, re leadership requires understanding, it requires patience, it requires perseverance, it requires sacrifice, but it's really important because in order to develop leadership skills, that will help you actually move forward to obtain the objectives that you've set out in your life, whether they are personal, physical, financial, spiritual, whatever it might be for you. So that's my encouragement, is to really focus on becoming a leader. Look to others who you admire and respect. See what they do and say, you know what, I can integrate that habit into my life to become a better leader. Leadership is also something that really needs to be foundationally developed into your, in, into your heart. You know, you want to lead people because you want to help people. You want to lead people so you can demean people or put pressure on people or, you know, basically be like a dictator over people. That's, that's not leadership. In my mind, that's being a bully. <laughs> so, you know, try and focus on being a, a leader who's focused on being more of a servant than a tyrant. <laughs> and if you can do that, I believe it'll help you obtain your objectives in life. So think about how you can lead in your relationships and your businesses in your finances and in your spiritual life to be able to move forward. And once again, focusing on the positivity. Another way to integrate these habits into your life is to be growth focused. So to focus on the ways that you can grow in your life. I don't believe it's very helpful if we just become complacent and we never wanna do anything necessary when it comes to hard work to move forward personally. Yeah, if you wanna be successful financially, it requires work to actually make money so you can save and invest it. If you wanna become successful physically, you need to go to the gym, you need to eat properly, you need to get proper rest, you have to do everything necessary that you can focus on your growth. If you want to become you know, someone who grows spiritually, it's really important to attend church. You, know, you want to attend a synagogue, you want to attend a mosque, whatever it is for you, you know, having some sort of spiritual discipline in your life where someone can guide and direct and help you, that's really important. Being open and receptive to criticism, being open and receptive to coaching, you know, people who want to become successful physically might hire a personal 
trainer. People want to grow spiritually, might you know make sure they have a pastor who can you know, oversee them or they talk to a counselor. People who want to obtain you know success financially would get you know help from a financial advisor. You know, so being open to that, being willing to grow and being willing to obtain new information that might stretch you a little bit, that puts you outside of your comfort zone, I think it's actually a really good thing you can do. So my encouragement to you is to be focused on that, to be able to be willing to grow and to be coachable so that way you can actually move forward and obtain your objectives. Because if you're at a stage right now where you haven't achieved the goals that you want, you might want to think about it for a second. Has this been something you've only focused on yourself and you haven't been able to actually get new information and insight? Because if you continue to do the same things in your life right now and expect a different result, I don't think you're necessarily going to find yourself obtaining the objectives that you truly want. So try and focus on ways that you can grow in your life to become more well-rounded personally. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. If you wouldn't mind liking this video, it would actually really help the channel out for the YouTube algorithm. It would help this video actually get pushed to other people who might need to hear an encouraging message like this. In addition, if you have any questions about this video or things that I've discussed, feel free to comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, answer any questions you have, and hear from you and share your stories. So please do that. I'd love to hear from you. And lastly, if you want to learn more what I'm doing on this channel, I, I'm covering a lot of topics on various videos from finance to personal development, all the way to even politics. So feel free to subscribe to this channel. That way you can get notified by watching videos when I post them on a regular basis. And once again, I really want to thank you for taking the time to understand the habits that you can develop in your life to become successful. So feel free to take a look at this video and other videos that I've developed over time, and I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you have a great day.